Bless the eyes and ears of the listeners. I plead your blood on this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we are Google meeting tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. The code is R-A-O dash U-B-O-F dash M-V-I. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're going to be doing some results of the Holy Spirit studies, which is super important. And we're going to be um, having that uh, military nurse Tara on there talking about what you need to know about what they're trying to put in your body. Super important. You need to hear. Um, you're hearing from the media, but now you need to hear from the other side, God's side. <clears throat> so it's very important to help you make your decisions. That's 8 o'clock tonight, Eastern Standard Time. And just come on in the room. Okay, uh, so yesterday on last night's YouTube video, did a Holy Spirit study, and we're going to continue that one. Okay, we went over that the English word for Christ is taken from the Greek meaning anointed, which is the same word as Messiah, the Hebrew word. Okay, and we talked about where the Holy Spirit fell on the, on the disciples. It was in the upper room. Okay, and what's the significance of the water baptism? And, and what does Jesus mean? You must be born. You must be born of spirit and of water to get in the kingdom of God. Does he mean that body of water right there? Or does he mean his word? He calls the water the word, the word the water. He says, you must be doer of my word. He's talking about his word. He's talking about us really becoming the word, living it. That's being baptized in the Holy Spirit that we must be. That's the water. We must be that body of water right there. When you duck up and down, that's very important, very significant. It shows an outward statement of faith that you are dead to your sins and you come up a new person. That's why that's important. It's an outward statement of faith. <clears throat> okay, so let's continue on. Another word used for the Holy Spirit is advocate. You can write that down. An advocate is someone who pleads a case, like, like a lawyer, okay? It's what Jesus, what God, the Holy Spirit does. The same word, advocate, is used for Jesus in 1 John 2, 1. Let's read it. My little children, these things I write to you, that you may not sin. And if anyone does sin, well, it says if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Okay, now, that's a word, y'all. That's one of the first times I ever heard the audible voice of God. And it was, it was years ago, years ago. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I was trying to change my life and go to church. And, 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 and I was uh, coming out of spiritual war, I mean, bad spiritual warfare, y'all, darkness. And um, the morning I was trying to go to church, you know, me and my, anyway, uh, we had a big argument that morning. We decided to go to church. Big argument that morning. And uh, <clears throat> I ran upstairs and I gave up. I was like, I can't. And I was cussing. I was like, I just can't do this. This isn't going to work. It's not going to work. I can't stop my mouth. Not going to work. And I heard God tell me, First John. That's what I did. That's what I heard. First John out loud. So I ran and got my Bible. I didn't know what was in First John. I opened it up right there. Bam. 2 1. If you know, like he's saying, you're going to sin. If you do slip up a sin, just ask me to forgive you. I'm your advocate. Come to me. Turn to me. If you mess up, turn to me. Okay? He don't expect perfection. But he, we grow into something. like Well, we'll never be perfect. But we grow into righteousness. Okay? And along the way, when we're slipping up, <clears throat> we ask Jesus for forgiveness. And then we keep on trying harder. Okay? That's what happened. So, uh, the Holy Spirit pleads the case of Christ for Jesus on earth through the believer. Okay, let's look, see Matthew 10, 19 through 20 for that. Matthew chapter 10, 19 through 20. It's very hard to do out here in the wind. Hold on a minute, y'all. 10, 19 through 20. Matthew Okay. <clears throat> the wind's blowing. <laughs> Back up. But when they deliver you up. Oh, wait a minute. Now listen. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about 
how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. By who? By the Holy Spirit. That's the kind of power he has. For it is not you who speaks, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Okay? So, <clears throat> it's wind, y'all. So the Holy Spirit pleads the cause of Christ Jesus on earth through the believer. Okay, and, and when we're getting persecuted and tormented, whatever, when we need to, to, to speak about Jesus and we don't know what to say in our times of trials and whatever, the Holy Spirit will speak for us. A lot of times, y'all, he speaks through me while I'm teaching you. Some of the things I was uncomfortable teaching you with, I was about to have an anxiety attack knowing I had to teach those things to you. The Holy Spirit <laughs> fell right out of my mouth during while I was teaching it, y'all. He helps. He'll help you. That's the truth. <laughs> okay. Uh, write this down in John 16, 7. Jesus said, It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And <clears throat> so when Jesus returned to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit upon the disciples immediately. They received a better knowledge and understanding of Jesus. A lot of people don't understand when they're filled with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. They don't understand. And they think they have to go through a process. No. Well, all you do is you ask for it. And you mean it with your heart. Ask Jesus for the Holy Spirit. Okay. The process part is continuing to fill up with it. With the, not yet him. Continuing to fill up with him, the Holy Spirit. You, you study, you pray, you start doing the things God tells you to do. And that's a continue, like, like keep putting gas in your car, filling it up, filling it up, filling it up. But all you have to do is ask with a sincere heart and you have the Holy Spirit in you, not a piece of him. He doesn't come in, like stick an arm in you or, or step, in, is step into you just a leg. Now, when you ask for him and you mean it, he's in you. Okay, but now you learn how to, Work with him, how to use him, how, you know, how to let him use you. You start growing. That's what you do now. You've already got him. Just learn how to use him. And that's what he'll do as you study, as he sees you trying to use him. You will start gaining knowledge and wisdom about things that you really never understood before. Being light bulbs are going to start popping on. That's the Holy Spirit. That's not your brain doing that. That's the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> That's what he does. So many of you that think you don't have them, and you, you seriously ask them, do you have that? You have the Holy Spirit, y'all. Just start using them. And one of the ways you use them is trust. Everything God does is off of trust. If you don't trust what God says, and he says, if you ask, you shall receive, then you got to do some kind of a reflection on your life. Figure out what's going on, you know, and, and, and you're going to have to trust God, y'all, with everything you have in you. And more so now than ever, you're going to have to learn how to trust him. He's God. He'll never hurt you, leave you, nor forsake you. Never. That's his promise. He's God we're talking about, y'all. So when Jesus returned to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit upon the disciples. Immediately, they received better knowledge and understanding of Jesus. Okay, they understood Jesus better than when he was present with them on earth. They understood him better after he went to heaven than they did while he was here on earth. That's the understanding the Holy Spirit would give you. Thus, the Holy Spirit fulfilled his ministry. The Holy Spirit is sent to reveal. Write this down. The Holy Spirit is sent to, what will he do for you? Well, he'll help you. He will reveal he will interpret and glorify the person, the work, and the message of Christ. Write it down. The Holy Spirit is sent to reveal, interpret, and glorify the person, the work, and the message of Christ. This is his ministry to us today. Okay. Near the beginning of 
all four Gospels, John the Baptist points to Jesus as the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Okay, the New Testament places the greatest possible importance on this part of Christ's ministry. And the Christians should do the same thing. All right, the Gospels close like they open with the promise of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You ask, you will receive. That's how God works. And you don't have to, uh, it's not a process of getting filled up. It's a process of learning how to work with the Holy Spirit by growing. Start recognizing, start realizing, start understanding as you grow. That's what will happen. Okay. So by his death on the cross, Jesus purchased the gift of the Holy Spirit for every single believer. You can see Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 through 14 about that. Okay. After his resurrection and ascension, okay, Jesus had the special privilege to receive this gift from the Father and then present it as a gift to you. All right. All through the New Testament. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is attested by the supernatural evidence of speaking with other tongues. That's evidence. Okay. And, and at the close of this age, God promised that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on all people one last time. Praise God. Every Christian has the scriptural right to ask for this gift. Every single one of you. You ask, you shall receive as God's words. So I'm going to give you a couple questions. You can write this down. Okay, question number one. It'll be in Acts 1.8. When did Jesus say that the disciples would receive power to become witnesses for him in Jerusalem? When did Jesus say that the disciples would receive power to become witnesses for him in Jerusalem? Acts 1.8. Okay, here's another one. This is in John 7.3.9. Why could the Holy Spirit not be given to the disciples during the earthly ministry of Jesus? Why could the Holy Spirit not be given to the disciples during the earthly ministry of Jesus? John 7, 39. Okay, one more. To whom does Peter say that the promised gift of the Holy Spirit is made available? Acts 2, 39. 2, 39. 2, 39. Acts 2, 39. To whom does Peter say that the promised gift of the Holy Spirit is made available. All right, that's all we're going to do right there. <clears throat> um, Google Meets is going to end up being more like that with a lot more questions, a lot more studying, okay? But this is just, just a little um, dose of it because of storage space and all. All right. Um, just go ahead and answer those questions. I'm not going to tell you. Go ahead and, and I'll be looking for your answers. If I give you a heart, it means you got it right. If you didn't get it right, I'll correct you. Okay? That's the way we're going to do this. I want you to study. God wants you to study. All right? I'm trying not to put too much on you, but study. I know some of y'all got kids and all that, but make some time. You know, they sleep a little bit sometimes. Study. Do a little studying. For, fit them in there, y'all, somewhere. Include them in your day. All right? If you don't know Jesus, ask him to save you. And try to be on Google Meets tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The code is R-A-O-U-B-O-F-M-V-I. All right, we might be on there an hour. We might be on there too. You know, just however the Holy Spirit takes it. Because that's who's teaching here, y'all. The Holy Spirit. That's it. All right. In Jesus' name, God bless each one of y'all. Some of you, thank you for what you did. Okay, anything else you need to know is in the description. God bless each one of you.